Today we're going to take an $8 Ikea table and turn it into a product booth for shooting videos and photos. This whole project is based around the Ikea lac side table. You can pick this up for just under $8 and you don't have to use this table. You can really use anything like this or even a cardboard box, but this is readily available and I had one upstairs and it turned out to be the perfect size for this project. The way the leg is constructed is there's just three legs that kind of screw into the particle board top. So I started by just removing one of the four legs. That legless corner is going to become the front of our booth. To keep the table from tipping forward, put something heavy on the back corner. You can use a dumbbell or something like that. I had a giant transformer, so I just threw that on the back leg. So next we're going to set up the background. For this, I just went to Target and picked up some of this project paperboard stuff. Comes in several different colors. So I grabbed the charcoal gray as well as a yellow. I added just a little bit of tape and attached it as far back as I could underneath the table. With the background in place, we need to set up a white ceiling for our little photo booth here. The whole concept of this setup is to use bounce lighting and the bottom of the table is like a finished particle board or something. So it's not going to bounce light very well. And this is where white foam core comes in. You can buy this stuff anywhere. I picked it up at Target and it came in a three pack and it was just about the right size. I took one of the three boards and taped it underneath the table. This will give us a great surface to bounce our light off of. Speaking of lights, you can really use any light for this. I found it easiest just to use small LED lights. You can pick these up on Amazon or eBay for 20 to 30 bucks, which is great. I had a couple of these Switronic lights on hand, so I'm gonna be using those. To mount the light, we're going to need a small articulating ball head. Just make sure you use one with a quarter 20 or one that you can adapt to a female quarter 20 on the bottom. We're going to be clamping this light to the leg of the table. So I ran over to Home Depot and picked up one of these awesome 99 cent dollar clamps. I have tons of these and I use them all of the time. The cool thing about these clamps is they have holes that are the perfect size for a quarter 20 bolt. The bolt I use is a little long, so I threw a couple extra nuts on there and then mounted the lights and the ball head onto the clamp. Now we have a great little clamped light setup that we can attach to the leg of the table. To test out the light, grab an object, throw it on the background and clamp your light to one of the legs. Turn on the light and position it so that the light is bouncing right around the center of that foam core ceiling we set up earlier. I turned off the house lights so you guys can see what this looks like. And as it is right now, this could be totally usable and you can already see how beautiful that bounce light is on the object but we're gonna be sprucing it up more. So there's a couple things we can do to really improve our lighting. The foam core I bought came in a three pack. So I grabbed the other two boards and on each of them, I cut about one third off. This gave me a total of four bounce cards, if you will. I then set them up so that there were two large ones in the back leaning up against the table and then two of the thinner ones in the front. This will still allow me to shoot video or photos, but it's going to add a lot of bounce light and fill to the subject. In this case, Lysol spray. We'll talk about some neat tricks a little bit later when it comes to using these fill cards, but the next thing we wanna do is flag the actual light. You'll notice on this Lysol spray bottle that there's some hot spots where we see the light hitting directly onto the spray bottle. We need to keep in mind our whole goal is soft, beautiful, pleasing light. So we don't want any harsh light. And as it stands, we're getting mostly bounced light, but some of the light is going directly from the light onto the subject. So we wanna block that or flag it. You could use some black foam core and just tape it on the light. I had some of this black wrap lying around, which is essentially hardcore aluminum foil that is black. So I'm gonna use that to block the light from hitting the bottle directly. And here's a before and after to show you how nasty that direct light is. With that done, an optional step would be to add a second light. This will fill in the background and give us a little more separation. Again, we don't want the light directly hitting our subject, so I used one of the back fill boards to keep the light from hitting the bottle. Now that we have our light dialed in pretty good, it's time to bring in something a little more interesting than Lysol all-purpose cleaner. So I grabbed these sexy Mies headphones that I recently got and I'll be reviewing shortly. And right away we have a problem. Smaller objects like this are obviously going to be farther away from our bounce light source. So we need to bring it closer or bring the light closer. A real simple fix to this is just to grab some square flat object and put it underneath the background paper. In my case, I just grabbed an old plastic bin and this did a great job with these headphones. Now we're gonna talk more specifically about using these lighting tools to really show off a product. So here we have one of the final shots and I'm gonna walk you through the lighting and the foam core placement for all of these bounce cards. 
looks kind of complicated, but it's really simple. Um, let's start with the front. You'll notice we have two pieces of foam core. Those are adding fill at the front. You'll notice that they're not centered. I didn't want the entire um, headphone to be all bright everywhere. I wanted a little bit of contrast. So you can see toward the front or the foreground of the shot, there's some nice shadow there, which is really, really nice. So that's what those are doing. And pretty much all of these are either just lean somewhere or you'll see I just have a little bit of tape holding it in place. This stuff is super light, so you don't need a lot to rig it up. So that is the front left and right. Um, on the backs, I have a piece of foam core on either side of the backdrop. So let's switch to the other side here. And that, again, that's just giving a more overall fill light and giving us that beautiful soft light. For lights, it's the same setup we saw earlier. One light with some wrap on it, black wrap, and that's to keep the light from directly hitting the headphones. All I want is bounce light. So there's no point where that light is straight on hitting the headphones there. Everything is indirect bounced lighting. The other light is in the back here, and that is strictly adding light to the background. Um, so there's gonna be a little bit of bounce, but the light isn't touching or hitting any of the headphones, and that is controlled by that one bounce card you see there. You can see it's kind of blocking the light from hitting the actual headphones. And then finally, I took a scrap piece, and you'll notice um, it's just dangling here going into the shot, this, this long piece of foam core. And that is for this little logo that's made of silver on the side of the headphone. I noticed it wasn't getting a lot of love in the shot and it's pretty dark, but it's a really cool feature on the headphone and kind of a uh, real eye catcher. So I added just that little piece you can see right there. And that's just giving me just enough fill to kind of lift up the exposure on that part of the headphones. Let's take a look at a bunch of before and afters to see how powerful these different little tools and tricks are for lighting. So here are the headphones with no modifiers, no flags, no bounce cards, no nothing. We just have the light bouncing off of the top of the table. And here's an image where we added a flag or some black wrap to keep the light from spilling or hitting directly onto the headphones. If I go back and forth here, you notice there's a pretty big difference and the lighting is much more pleasing. Next, we have fill added as well as a background light. And then finally, that one single piece of foam core just to show off the logo on the side of the headphones. Once we're happy with our lighting and we get a couple shots, we can go ahead and bring them in and add some color correction and grading. So that is how I took an Ikea table and turned it into a really great product booth for shooting videos and photos. A couple things that you can do to further either improve or modify how you use this setup. First, you can easily change the background. So I've been using the gray, but you could throw in other colors like this yellow. So sky's the limit, you can use any color, any kind of photos, really anything for that. Another tip is if you're going to be using two lights, Try playing with different color temperatures. So in these shots, the foreground, the main light that bounces is set to tungsten color, so 3200 Kelvin. But the background light is set to daylight or 5600 Kelvin. And that'll give you a really awesome, warm, cool look and vibe to the shots that you take. If the lights you have don't have adjustable color temperature, just use some different color gels. You can pick these up almost anywhere and get unlimited combinations of colors. Another thing you could experiment with is using silks or diffusion instead of bounce lighting. I'm a big fan of bounce lighting. I think it looks stunning, but um, a lot of people out there have used diffusion. So frost filters, ripstop nylon from the fabric store, something that the light will go through and then be, have a soft diffuse light on the other end. And finally, this whole thing is scalable. So I've been using this little Ikea table. No one says you can't build the same thing from scratch if you're really handy, a larger piece of furniture, or even just setting this up underneath your table if you want a really nice large area, if you have some bigger products that you wanna get photos or video of. So that does it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future videos here at DSLR Video Shooter. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. video.